Hello everyone, in case you don't know, I'm the author of a program called J Dupes, which is F Dupes, except, you know, with my egotistical J for Jody in front of it. Anyway, um, I'm testing out a program called F Clones, which touts itself as being way better than J Dupes and F Dupes and RD Find and all the other duplicate scanners because it's massively multi threaded, capable, multi threaded, it makes it so much faster on use a fast hash algorithm and like 32 threads and you know, it's, it's super duper fast, and it beats JDupes by like four times, even though it doesn't do a byte for byte check at the end, and they didn't run JDupes with the option that skips the byte for byte check at the end, and so on and so forth. So I thought I'd run my own benchmark, because I wrote a thing on my website, I wrote some comments where this author is bragging all over the place about how much better this program is. I thought, well, you know, a little competition here, why don't we see what's really better? And I looked at the algorithm and the benchmarks and stuff. Guy's running a Xeon processor, big fat server processor, and he's got 32 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigabyte supposedly, probably, but not specified, enterprise grade, super fast SSD. So my bet was that 32 threads of a synchronous input output to a spinning rust hard drive like the vast majority of people who'd want to dedupe stuff have is going to result in horror. Absolute horror because random I.O. is slow. You can take a hard drive that can stream reads at 180 megs a second if you're doing sequential reads at the beginning of the disk and drop it down to 3 megs a second with enough random read and write activity. So it's mirrored and you can't see it, but look at Task Manager here. If, if you can see it at all, just look. Look at the number. Oh, God, it's mirrored. It's terrible. Uh, you can't really see it. The bottom line is that this F-Clones program, I'm running a scan on a data set that's a mix of video files and image files, 122 gigs. And on the SSD, I have a super-duper fast SSD, a, a Samsung Evo 970 or something. And it's, uh, it, it took a minute and 10 seconds. And then I have a one terabyte 5400 RPM hard drive hooked to a USB 3 enclosure cable. And that... <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's been running for over three hours. And it's about halfway done. 5.8, 6.2 megs a second. It's bouncing between 5 and 12 megs a second, but most of it's been floating around 6. So, the problem is, see, JDupes reads sequentially, and this program is multi-threaded. Ooh, ah. Problem is, when you're dealing with disks, solid-state drives, really, really fast ones, yeah, sure, the multi-threaded thing, they can probably saturate the buses, and your limits start becoming how fat your bus is, how big your processor caches are, that kind of stuff. You know, it can really tax the system to the max. The problem is, this is a hard drive. Most people who have data and want to dedupe have hard drives, not SSDs. Now, yes, some people do have SSDs. Yes, I understand SSDs may be a use case. Yes, it might be faster to use this program, F-Clones, over JDupes if you have an SSD that's really fast and a processor that's really fast. Here's the problem. It's super slow on a hard drive. 6 megs a second on a 108 meg a second hard drive. It took 20 minutes, 20-25 minutes, to copy 122 gigs of data to this drive. Uh, I think it was. Was that right? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, that's about right. At 100 megs, 108 megs a second, it took about 25 minutes to copy all the data to the drive. Now, if the drive could write that fast, it can read that fast. But here's the problem. We have now taken 180 minutes, more than 180 minutes, and we're only halfway through. So let's say 360 if, it, if the trend continues. 360 minutes, six hours, is probably how long it's going to take to run this. If JDupes can read all the files sequentially instead of in parallel, um, worst case scenario, since I know for a fact there's three copies of everything at least, um, one, two, one, three, two, three, yeah, you're probably looking at having, um, you're looking at about double the time because it's going to have to read, to, not even double, 
But let's say it was double. Let's say it was double the 25 minutes. That's 50 minutes. 50 minutes versus 360. Less than an hour versus six hours. F clones take six hours. J dupes takes 50 minutes. And that's just theoretical. I'm waiting to see what the actual benchmark results are, and I'm not running this benchmark again because I've been without my computer because you can't use the computer while you do benchmarks. This damn thing has put my computer out of commission while I wait on it to finish calculating up where the duplicates are on this hard drive. Because you see this? You see this light? You see this damn hard drive light right here? Look at that. That's it. That's what I'm having to deal with. That light's just blinking constantly because the hard drive's seeking all over the place. I'm going to put my hand on it right now. I can just feel the hard drive head racing back and forth. Yeah. It's really important when you design a program that you consider all the possible use cases. You can't just run it on your system and be like, Oh God, I have this super duper workstation and it's so fast. Yeah, your multi-threaded boo -ba -da -boo, -ba -da boo is about to take six times as much time, if not more, than my stupid, primitive, slow, single-threaded piece of garbage. And the same thing will happen on a RAID array. A RAID array is not going to read this thing at like 100 megs a second. And you, know, you might have a RAID array that could pull 900 megs a second. This stupid program isn't going to read 900 megs a second with 32 asynchronous I.O. threads or whatever it was. It's, it's just not going to do it. It can't. All it takes is like three or four things fighting for I.O. before you drag your program down into an abyss where it's like single digit megabytes a second and you can't get anything to come through. The whole reason that computers have been slow for so long is the damn hard drives. Processors have gotten stupid fast. RAM is stupid fast. It's not as fast as a processor, but it's still stupid fast. But then you have this crap where a bunch of stuff fights over the hard drive and it's a classic mechanical hard drive because if you want capacity, you ain't getting a 14 terabyte solid state drive for $250. But you can go get a hard drive at Best Buy for that. Yeah. It, it's just, it's really depressing because this guy's running around the internet saying F clones is better because it's multi threaded and written in Rust and all this crap. But. I'm, I'm sitting here watching it. Oh my god, it's the first time I've seen it hit 20 megs a second since it started doing this. Um, and it was hitting the solid state at 2,500 megs a second. But, uh, it's back down to single digits again. It must have compared movie files. That's all I can think of, because the movie files are huge sequential files. So, it's just... You have to take the use cases into account. You can't just assume that what you have in front of you is good enough. You know, people who have real storage servers, real storage solutions, a NAS or whatever, they're not using solid state drives. They're using big fat hard drives they shucked out of a Western Digital Easy store. Or they're using some gigantic like Seagate Iron Wolves they paid way too much money for, for the fast failure crap and high end blah blah blah. So, I just, it, it really kind of irks me when people denigrate my work in favor of their work, but they've not even considered anything other than what they're sitting in front of, other than their one individual use case, and then they run around the internet saying, oh, my tool's best, the best thing since sliced bread, or since duplicated slices of bread. Or whatever. Uh, anyway, I hate recording videos on the phone. My arm is falling asleep. But the bottom line is, no, I know my tool is not the fastest on solid state drives. I know there are things to be improved. And I'm working on it. But if you're going to use a duplicate scanner, understand how the algorithm works. Understand where things are being compromised. This thing doesn't even do a byte for byte check. If there's a hash collision, you just potentially lose your data, and that's the end of it. <sighs> Be careful. Be careful. Any idiot can pick up a compiler and a how to and learn to code. And the problem is that anybody can potentially be a programmer, but it's hard to be a good programmer. And it's especially hard to be a programmer that writes a program that's really careful with other people's stuff. And that's where I'm going to leave you. Take care. Have a good night. I hope you enjoy J-Dupes.